been seeing a lot of information lately about the Nikon D700 having legendary colors versus any other camera. Today we're gonna to find out. I'm gonna be taking pictures with a Nikon D700 and a Sony a7 III. This is a two, it's for display purposes only. Forgive me, I'm using the, my a7 III to film this YouTube video. So it's over there, <laughs> this is over here. The Nikon D700 has magic colors. So I did some research and I hear claims like legendary, incredible, unmatched. Unmatched colors, really? <laughs> this old camera from 08? So I thought, let's do an experiment. Let's find out for myself. So today I'm gonna to compare the Nikon D700 to the Sony a7 III. The Nikon, Nikon, Nikon. I'm gonna mix it up a lot. <laughs> Bear with me. Does this really have in unmatched, unparalleled colors? Let's find out. So let's give you a quick history. Film peaked in the 90s, okay, with the SLR camera. DSLRs took over in the 2000s and the zeros, okay. In the 2000 teens, the mirrorless camera took the market. It is the current favorite camera to pick up if you're buying a professional level camera. The D700 is 12 megapixels and was released in 08 and can be purchased used for 250 to 400, depending on condition. And the, the Sony a7 III was released in 2018. It's still purchased new for $1,800. So 10 years difference between the release dates. I shot everything in JPEG. The camera was set to standard color science. I shot it aperture priority and native ISO, which on the Nikon is 200, on the Sony is 100. Auto white balance. So let the camera do the thinking, okay? As much as possible. Now, in my shooting, the Nikon feels like a real camera. The Sony feels like an electronic device. Hard to describe it any other way. The Nikon only does photography. The Sony, it'll do photography, it'll do video. It does video very well. I'm using it to film this. It has a touch screen, it has eye autofocus, it has face detect, it has touch the screen and say focus on that spot right there, just like a cell phone. The Nikon has a optical viewfinder. The Sony has a electronic viewfinder. Optical viewfinder is much brighter in the daytime when you're outside shooting in the daytime, okay? than the electronic viewfinder. Electronic viewfinder is electronic. It's like a monitor. You're looking through a monitor, okay? The, the optical viewfinder, you're looking through glass. So you're seeing exactly what's out there, okay? The Nikon does not do rapid fire very well at all. The Sony excels at rapid fire or machine gun shooting. Huge buffer, shoot all you want. Nikon, it's, it'll do like a dozen shots and then slow way down. And then you have to pause and say, okay, wait a second while well, my camera catches up. Now, while I was out shooting, I did notice that this, the Nikon focuses faster and locks on. I don't know why. The Sony struggled to find the focus point. It drifted a lot more than the Nikon. I don't know why it did that. So, is the Nikon really magic? <laughs> is it really? Is it really legendary? Let's find out. First picture up. On the left, the Nikon. On the right, the Sony. And you could see immediately the skin tone on the Nikon is definitely a little bit brighter, a little more pleasing to the eye. That's a portrait. That's the most important thing. Nikon is the winner in this particular photograph. In this next one, again, the Nikon has brighter and more pleasing skin tones. And like before, the darker shadows on the Sony are not flattering. The skin tones are harsher and sharper on the Sony side. Her skin is just a little bit softer on the Nikon side. Remember, these are JPEGs out of the camera, no editing. The Nikon, again, her face is brighter than the Sony. Her eyes are brighter. Everything is just a little bit brighter on the Nikon than the Sony. Oddly, the fence on the Sony is greener than the fence on the Nikon, which I can't understand. Obviously, the light was reflecting off of the grass, so you're going to get a green hue to the, to the white fence. But the Nikon seems to control that better than the Sony. In all three of the kids' images, the skin is brighter and softer and better to look at. The Sony, as the shadows cast, the shadows are deeper color on the Sony, which is not as flattering for portraits. The Nikon is the clear winner when it comes to portraits. Moving on. Okay, so this image of the house, the sidewalk is warmer on the Nikon side than the Sony side, but the house is whiter on the Sony side. The teal shutters on the Sony side are definitely better than the, the Nikon side. So in this situation, both images have a good part and a bad part. So if I were to pick an image overall, I, I really can't. One's not better than the other. So this one is kind of a wash. Flowers in the front yard. The Nikon flowers are, the greens on the Nikon side are greener. The greens on the Sony side are yellower. Not as much distinction between the flowers and the green behind it. The Nikon side, the green is deeper, and so it brings out the yellow color in the flowers. This image, the sun is hitting that amber building, and the sun is a major part in the aesthetic of this image, so the Nikon is better being slightly 
higher exposure than the Sony. Now this one's very interesting because it's very close, but if you look carefully, if you look at the greens, okay, on the top of the frame, the greens, the, the Nikon greens are more green, the Sony greens have a hint of yellow in them. So the Sony greens are warmer than the Nikon, and in the bottom of the image, you say it's the same situation where the Nikon greens are greener than the Sony greens. Now the pink is very, very close, but it's slightly more pronounced and saturated on the Nikon side than the Sony side. So I would say in this situation, the Nikon is the winner here, only by a tiny bit, but the Nikon looks a little bit better. These flowers are very interesting because it's a little bit clearer, the difference, that the Sony, the Nikon difference. Okay, so you can see the greens, the Nikon greens versus the Sony greens. The Nikon greens are definitely greener. The Sony greens have a yellow hue to them. And now if you look at the flowers, the Nikon flowers are warmer than the Sony flowers. See how the Sony flowers lean toward purple and the Nikon flowers lean toward the yellows. So I think in this situation the Nikon is cooler in the green, warmer in the reds. Since green is a cool color, leaning toward cool is better color science than the Sony has. So this situation, you can see that the Nikon color science is better than the Sony color science. I would agree <laughs> the Nikon is unmatched. Incredible, legendary, more so than the Sony. Sony does a very good job, a very good camera. It's the camera I use for my professional work, okay? I still will continue to use it, I'm not gonna change. The Nikon is very affordable. If you don't have a camera and you're looking to buy and you have a budget, oh, get the Nikon. It even has, look at this, pop-up flash. <laughs> very traditional look if you use that pop-up flash. <laughs> the Sony doesn't have that. Battery life on the Nikon is better than battery life on the Sony. But the a7 III battery life is a lot better than the a7 II battery life for the Sony. So battery is less of an issue. And if you turn off the back monitor on the Sony, it's going to last you a long time. Thanks for watching and subscribe and be happy. Now get out there, get your favorite camera, get out there and shoot some whatever. Shoot some stuff. Shoot your kids, shoot your grandkids. Have some fun.